All right, so typically licensed photos, passport photos can be some of the cringiest photos ever. My personal philosophy is that because you know you only have one take, if you're getting it done somewhere, the pressure is on and you crumble. So today I wanted to share a makeup look and some tips and recommendations specifically for powders and foundation products and stuff in flash that will hopefully make your passport photo or license photo look bomb. Also, when I was in the airport a few weeks ago, I noticed that they had all these signs out saying that starting, I think this year or maybe next year, you're gonna actually have to get a new license to be able to use that as your form of identification in the airport, which is kind of crazy. So maybe you can use that as a new opportunity to get a new license photo. That's what I'm gonna do. Also, life hack, I feel like everyone needs to know this. If you're gonna be doing international travel when you're coming back in the US through customs, you gotta download their free, this is not sponsored by the airport or TSA, but download the, okay, it's called Mobile Passport. You take a photo of yourself on your phone, enter your passport info, and then you can cut the entire line. Literally, I saved about two hours doing that when I was coming back from London, so do it. But anyways, on to the makeup look, here we go. If you enjoy this video while you're watching and you find it helpful, you can give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, so step one, I think for getting a good passport or license photo is actually not makeup related, but it's your shirt choice and your hair. So the color of shirt you go with is gonna depend on your hair color. I would say if you have lighter hair, like blonde hair, I would go with a black shirt because you're gonna be against a white background. But if you have darker hair like I do, if I wore a black shirt, my hair would just kind of like fade into the shirt. It would stand out from the background more, but because I'm wearing a white tank top, you can still see the skin on my shoulders and it kind of like contrast with my hair color. So just keep in mind the shirt that you're gonna be wearing. Typically not a whole lot shows, like literally only a couple inches, but this one is more high neck, which I would also recommend if you want your shirt to be in the frame. So this shirt I actually just got a couple weeks ago, so I think it should still be available. It's from Hollister, I'll link it down below if you want a nice like high neck tank top and it's just really cute and like waffle print and super soft. All right, so I personally use an SPF as my SPF and my moisturizer. If you do wear an SPF in flash photography, just make sure it's a chemical one that doesn't cause flashbacks. So my La Roche-Posay one is the one that I wear in Foundation Friday wear test for that reason because it doesn't cause a bounce back. So if you are gonna be putting on SPF, just double check that it won't cause that flashback. If you're not sure, just skip it and wear a moisturizer. But I'm gonna be trying out this primer today. It's the it Cosmetics New Primer Makeup Gripping Base. You can just do whatever you want with the primer. I've been wanting to try this one for a few days now. It actually feels way more moisturizing than I was picturing. It does seem to be a little bit glowy. So your face makeup for these photos are probably the most important thing. I've had some real ghostly, real scary looking photos, especially if you have fair skin, I would say, be extra careful with the foundation that you're choosing to wear for the flash photos because if you're not choosing the right one, it can just make you look like two shades lighter than you actually are and you can look just really scary. So first of all, make sure your foundation doesn't cause bounce back. If you wanna test it, you can use your cell phone and put on the flash and see if there's any kind of white cast, which just basically means that your face looks lighter than it actually is in real life. I personally like to go half a shade to a shade darker for the photo than I generally would wear in real life. Just because, again, there's something with flash where even if it doesn't cause bounce back, you can just look like a little bit off. It just makes your skin look a little bit healthier and stuff if you go a little bit dark. So I'm gonna use the Givenchy Tint Couture Everywhere. I recently reviewed this, what, like over a month ago? And this is in the shade P115. This foundation has zero flashback. It has great coverage. It sits beautifully on the skin and the shade is too dark for me. So it's the perfect foundation for me for this video. I have a tiny, tiny bit of self-tanner left over right now. I actually think this foundation might match a little bit better today than it normally does when I don't, but I think it is, yeah, it'll still be a little bit too dark. It just sits so nice on my skin. It looks healthy and I love the coverage. To get the best coverage, I like to stipple it on. I'm not blending like this. And for the photos, if you are someone who has freckles or you feel like when you're in an airport, you're in somewhere where they'd be checking your ID, you typically don't have on like a full coverage foundation. The goal of this photo is to look like yourself so you're recognizable, but obviously we all want a nice photo, you know? So I wouldn't recommend doing anything too drastic than like your everyday. I'm gonna drag it down a little bit and add a little bit more foundation just so it all blends. So 
So for concealer, same kind of thing. I wouldn't go too crazy brightening. That's also kind of like a trend right now is the lighter under eyes, but keep in mind that makeup trends can always change. So if you're gonna be having your passport photo for like 10 years or whatever it is until it expires, just keep that in mind too. But up to you. If you like the bright under eyes, go for it. But I'm gonna do kind of more of a, you know, natural-ish under eye. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in the shade 15. Under eye powders, you kind of have to worry about more than the actual concealer as far as causing bounce back, especially loose, translucent kind of powders that a lot of people use for your under eyes. Those can cause major bounce back, so just be careful. So if you have certain products at home that you want to use for the photo, I would say just do a test round on your iPhone and do your makeup exactly how you would wear it for the photo and just make sure none of the powders or liquids are gonna cause the flashback. For example, I wouldn't use my Physicians Formula one because this one does have SPF 16 in it, random number. This powder, the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet, is what I typically use to set my under eyes and my face that doesn't cause a flashback, so I'm just gonna use that. So flash can also kind of make some foundations look glowier than they actually are and almost make your skin look like a little bit oily. So for flash photos, I don't want right here to be as like glowy as it is. So I'm just gonna tap in the powder right there to kind of matte my pore area out. And this just really blurs it too since this powder is very blurring. I'm gonna set right here because I'm gonna be blending blush, bronzer, highlight. And then for my forehead, I like a good forehead glow so I'm not gonna touch it. Again, do you, if you want it to be matte, matte it up. Now I would typically go in for eyebrows. I have my brows microbladed. I just got them touched up and I also recently tinted them. So I don't have to do a whole lot to my brows at all right now, which is amazing. But I am gonna add just a touch more with the Sigma brow pencil in dark. I would say if you normally fill in your brows pretty naturally or you keep them totally natural, do that for the photo. If you normally like full on fill them in every day, then do that. Just do whatever is gonna make you look like you. So since you just get kind of washed out in flash, I am gonna go a little bit overboard on the blush and bronzer. So it might look like, you know, a little bit too much on video, but the goal is to look good in the photo. So this is the Maybelline City Bronzer. I like this one for just adding overall color and warmth to my face without looking orange. And then I'm gonna go in with a contour product to actually like sculpt out my face a little bit more. So to contour, I'm gonna go in with the Pladio Definer. Been loving this. These powders are so soft. So I'm gonna take mostly this middle shade, but this one can look a little bit ashy. So I'm gonna mix in just a little bit of the warmer shade right next to it. If you're taking a photo straight on, I would definitely recommend contouring because it's gonna create those shadows that you're not naturally gonna get by just taking a photo like that. Typically, if we turn our heads, even if I don't have on contour, like on this side, I'm gonna look like I have more cheekbones just because of the angle, but if you're going straight on, you're almost gonna have to like create those angles. So if you look straight on, you can see the difference between this side and this side already. So because I'm keeping my forehead pretty dewy, I do wanna use a more matte blush. This one is super pretty on the skin. This is in the shade That Peach Though from Bare Minerals. I am still gonna be putting on a highlight, so I just want a more matte cheek so it's not like too glowy, oily looking. So this blush you can build up depending on what you're going for. And as you're doing this, you can kind of like practice smile to see where, where your blush and everything is gonna hit. So I can see that I need to add like a little bit more right here. So highlight, again, totally optional. I'm gonna use highlight just because I really like the look of that, especially like in a straight on photo when you can see it on your cheeks. I know there's just something about it that I really like. So I'm gonna go in with the Hourglass Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. This is one of my favorites. I haven't used it in a long time and I wanted to whip it out again today, but I used to use it like every single day. So I'm just gonna do kind of like a mix of all three shades and pop it on there. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm focusing it mostly right here because that's what's gonna show in the photo. Nothing that I apply over here is gonna show. When I turn my head, it will, but if I'm just looking straight on, this is what's gonna show up. And I don't think I wanna do my nose. I wanna keep my nose just more kind of satin of a finish. Okay, so we've got the face on. So for eye makeup, this is gonna be just totally whatever you wanna do, what you feel comfortable in, and whatever you wear most often. So when I'm in the airport, so if I was doing like a passport photo, I would probably go much more light on the eye makeup. Like I wouldn't do a full wing. I feel like when I do a wing, it totally changes my eye shape and like my whole look versus if I just have mascara on. When I'm in an airport, especially for international travel, there's like a 99% chance I'm wearing 
maybe like something on my face, but probably nothing on my eyes just because I don't want to like deal with it with sleeping and being on a long flight. If I'm taking a license photo, I probably personally would wear a winged liner just because that's what I wear most often like day to day. So I'm going to do this one as kind of like a combo of the two just in between because I feel like that'll average out to what I might look like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna apply my eyeshadow base first, this is by CoverGirl. For eyeshadow, I'm actually just gonna take that same Plotio palette and this is all I'm gonna use for eyeshadow. I ended up kind of just taking a mix of these two shades. Then I'm gonna take this shade for my crease. I do wanna create a little bit of definition there, but nothing too heavy or too crazy. And when you're doing this, since the photo is gonna be straight on just make sure to kind of check your mirror and look straight on to make sure your eyes are even as even as possible my eyes are really not even and also they just fall different ways so sometimes if i'm looking at a certain angle that looks like they're even and then when i look straight on they're not at all so just you can keep double checking to try and get them as even as possible then i'm just going to use a fluffy brush to blend that out Okay, so personally, for what I want to go for fries, I've decided I want to do mascara, no liquid liner, or I might do like a touch but not a wing. And then I am going to put on false lashes only because these ones are very natural looking. They don't totally alter how my eyes look, but they look kind of like how my eyes look between a winged liner and between just mascara, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to take my Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. So I'm going to pop on these lashes and I'll be right back. After I did my lashes, I just filmed that whole part with the mic off, so that's great. Mm, you guys, I knew that was gonna happen. I turned off my mic while I was putting my false lashes on, and then uh, did not record audio for that last part. So basically, I just put on lipstick and talked about what I did. So I'm just gonna kind of talk through that now and insert that footage. But I ended up putting on a little bit of eyeliner just to kind of cover up the lash band. I think these kind of lashes are perfect because they're not too dramatic. I still look like myself, but they just add a little something. So if you want to pick up a drugstore alternative, these ones you get on shopmissa.com. They're a dollar. But if you want to just like run in to CVS or something and pick up a similar one, you can get the Kiss Natural Lashes or the Ardell Demi Wispies. Both of those are pretty similar. So now onto lipstick. I wanted to choose a liquid lipstick that was nude and kind of like my lips, but a little bit darker. So I'm going in with the Shop Miss A, $1 AOA in Fleek. This one dries down about a shade darker, so it looks a little bit light when I'm applying it, but then you'll see it dries down and kind of darkens. If you did more of a matte foundation look, if you do something glossy, that could look nice. Because I did more of like a glowy foundation look, I'm using a matte liquid lip just to kind of balance it out. But this is the final makeup look. When it comes to taking your actual passport photo, if that's what you're using this for, you can do it yourself if you have like a white wall at home, or you could go to, I think, Walgreens and CVS. Maybe Rite Aid also does like the whole passport photo thing where they take it for you, but it's super easy if you just have a white wall at home, you could have someone take it up and just look up the dimensions. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. I feel like a hiccup is coming. Hiccup or a burp, which is it? <laughs> hiccup. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. I also have a travel playlist if you're into that. I have travel vlogs and I also have some Amazon travel favorites and things like that. So I'll put my travel playlist down below in the description box along with everything that I used on my face today. Everything is always in the description box down below. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.